to the Wild Podcast. I am your host, Jeffrey Zamore. Thank you for taking the time to join me. Thank you for listening to another episode. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, how you guys been? How is everybody doing? I hope you're having an amazing week as always. I hope that God is, is blessing you. I hope that you're receiving the favor of God everywhere you go, every foot step that you take. I pray that God is at the center of your life. Um, I do apologize real quick. I just want to give it a, a quick, quick um, backstory why there was not an episode that dropped last week. Um, last week, it was been a pretty busy week. Um, I was out of town. I was actually in Florida uh, for my niece's graduation. Shout out to my niece, Karina, who just graduated from Seminole High School in Sanford, Florida. So shout out to her. I am super, super, super proud of her. She's going to be going to university, University of Central Florida. She is going to school to become a dentist. And um, there's nothing short of what God is going to do in her life. Also, as well, my cousin Yasmin, she was also a guest on one of our previous episodes, preparing for my preparing during my singleness. So shout out to her real quick. Because she also graduated from harvard um harvard business school or it's business school of harvard um with her master's so i just want to shout out her for that i believe it was business i think it's business but either way shout out to her you know harvard graduate shout out to my cousin man, i'm so proud of you and also shout out to my cousin patricia who also graduated um with her nursing degree i believe it was her bachelor's in nursing I am super, super proud of her as well, man. So much graduation has been taking place, but also I have my daughter who I love and adore and having been spending time with. I had her for the past about, you could say almost two weeks. You know, for those who don't know, my daughter lives in Atlanta, Georgia. So anytime I get a chance to spend time where I do, normally I spend time with her during the summer and we had such an amazing time. I actually just dropped her back off um, the other day. Um, but she'll be back again in a couple of weeks. So we'll be able to get a chance to spend some more time with her. She's in cheerleading. So she's doing a cheerleading camp or cheerleading, cheerleading practice is what she says. But I'm super proud of her. Super proud of her. So shout out to my daughter as well. And yeah, so it's just been a really busy week. And I usually have all my episodes recorded in advance or most of them at least. Um, but I'm going to be honest. I've been... I have my topics. I have things that I'm going to talk about, but you know, sometimes like you'll write these topics down, you feel them and you know what you're going to talk about. I normally try to see God with these, with these topics, but then I feel like something will change. Right. And, or I'll just kind of get like a, um, I don't want to say a brain fart, but I'm just kind of like, okay, what, how am I going to, how am I going to dissect this topic or, or really give this topic to your children, God, to his people, because that's what it's about. It's not for me. It's really for him. And I asked God, I said, God, what is it you want me to talk about? I don't know if, you know, I don't think I've really been seeking you, you know, as of lately, or at least as much as I should, if I'm going to be quite honest. Uh, even though the last several topics or topics I've had, you know, I definitely feel like God has really blessed and influenced those conversations. But I'm like, okay, but God, what is it that you really want me to talk about? Because I have these list of topics here. But I don't know, for some reason, I feel like these, this is not what you want me to talk about right now. And he said, I want you to talk about me. I was like, okay, you, but isn't every topic surrounded by you? But he's like, no, specifically about like who I am. I said, oh, okay. And I was like, all right, cool. So I went in, I grabbed my Bible because I want to do some reading and I started reading Exodus and with Exodus, this is the story of Moses. And you see his encounter with God and how much when he had his encounter with God, how much like that has pretty much changed everything. Like his encounter with God was a game changer. And God says something specifically to him. I am who I am. And this is what God said this to Moses when they first when he first encountered Moses, because he called Moses through, um, through the burning bush. And Moses, you know, he was asking Moses to free his, his children of Israel from Pharaoh, from Egypt. And so Moses said to God, 
but how do I tell these people when they ask me like, yo, who, who sent me? You let them know that me, I am who I am. And so I read that. I was like, Hmm. And we're going to dive into scripture on it. So we can actually break this down a little bit more, but I just want to give context. And I was like, okay, I see the angle that you want me to go. God, I got you. I got you. I got you. So that's what we're going to talk about today in this week's episode. But before we dive in any further, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you, God, for another day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, God, that we can go to your word and understand who you are. We know that, God, we can have an encounter with you, a supernatural encounter with you that will transform our lives forever. And I pray that those who are watching, those who are listening, will be able to experience that. They will be able to experience who you are. They'll be able to experience your love, your comfort, your glory. They'll be able to experience your mercy and your favor, Father God. I pray, Father God, that those who may even be straying away, I pray that you will call them back and bring them back, Father God, and, and help them understand that their life is much better with you in it versus you being without it. We know that you don't force relationships, but we know that, God, that you will patiently wait on us. So we just thank you, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I'm going to start off with my journey, and then we'll go ahead and dive in a little bit further. So um, I grew up Catholic. Grew up Catholic. And I didn't really know that there was a difference between being Catholic and being a Christian. And when I actually converted to becoming a Christian or started going to a Christian church, because that's how it actually started. And this started back in 2009 because at the church I was going to at the time, the Catholic church, I felt like I wasn't really receiving anything spiritually, to be quite honest. Right. And it's not a knock on the Catholic faith or the church or just anything in general. I just felt like I wasn't receiving anything. And so a coworker um, of mine at the time, had told me about this church called Church by the Glades. Shout out to Church by the Glades. <clears throat> they are located in South Florida, an amazing church. Uh, pastor David, who is the head pastor of that church. I love this. I love this church to this day. I still follow on Instagram. It's such an amazing church. Um, that church actually set foot my journey of, of really becoming a Christian, right? And so I started going to this church and I was like, yo, I'm, I see the difference. I'm receiving the word of God. I'm, I'm hearing the word of God. This is amazing. And so, but I still wasn't really like walking in my faith the way I should have. Right. I thought I was at the time because I thought it was really just going to church, believing in Jesus Christ. And that's all it was, but no, there's really much more to that. And even to be honest with you, I don't, I don't really remember even having like a strong encounter with God. And I got baptized too. Actually, when I started going there, I got baptized, maybe like, Six months to a year after attending, actually a year, a year after I attended, I got baptized, which was great. And I confessed that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, but I wasn't really that um, dedicated as I should have, especially once like my career took off. I started traveling for work. I wasn't able to go to church as much as I wanted to, which, you know, when that happens is that when you're not able to go to church as much as you wanted to, or you're not doing bedside service. Um, what do they call it? Bedside Baptist. I think that's what they call it. Basically, when you watch in church from the comfort of your bed at home online, I wasn't really doing that. Right. I was just so consumed with work and just traveling that I started to backpedal in my faith. And then eventually, to be quite honest, after a while, I would say around 2015, 2016, I started questioning everything. Not God. I never questioned God. I never questioned Jesus. But I just started questioning everything because I, there was so much that was going on and i started like seeing certain scriptures taken out of context because i really wasn't fully reading the scripture or understanding some of these scriptures and so i started just questioning everything and sometimes you when you get too much information especially through social media your your mind becomes overload overloaded and that's what that's what was happening to me and so i, was, I started using this term that you'll hear people say like oh i don't believe in religion, I'm I'm a spiritual person, right? And that's a whole separate conversation. Because to me, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. And that's really more what it is. And it's, that's also the premise of this whole conversation, is a relationship that you have with God, right? 
um, that's what it's about. Because you can call yourself a Christian or you can call yourself Baptist or Pentecostal or Catholic or whatever um, faith that you believe in. You have every right to believe what you want to believe. And I respect everybody's belief. And, I'm, and now for me, it's just me. I personally don't knock anybody's belief. Your belief is your belief. Um, your belief is your belief. I would just challenge you to make sure that whatever it is that you believe in, make sure that you know it's coming from God and you're having a, uh, 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 you've had a, a, an encounter with God. Ask for wisdom and ask for discernment. Because to me, that's the only really way you could convince any and anybody who God really is, right? Who Jesus Christ really is. Like nobody could come to me and tell me anything different. I don't care who it is. I don't care what your faith is, right? For me, because of what I went through in my relationship with God and my encounter with God, there's nothing that can change that. The best testimony is an encounter, to be quite honest. It really is because then you can't convince somebody otherwise. So that's what I would challenge anybody, but this, you know, not to lose track or to be sidetracked or lose the direction I'm going with this conversation. And so I kind of start just living life and I started seeing my life start to fall apart little by little without me realizing it. Right. I had a series of different events that took place and I had embraced new challenges and I needed God, but I still wasn't seeking him the way I should have been seeking him. And the moment I decided, I was like, you know, I remember 2018 hits. And at this point, you know, my life was, I felt like it was starting to just really, really spiral out of control. I feel like I was losing everything. I feel like I was losing a lot. And I mentioned this before, but I'm going to keep mentioning it, mentioning this because this is how much, how amazing God is. And so I started 2018. I was like, yo, I need to get back to church. And so I get back to church through this young lady that, um, that I met at a job I was working at. We end up dating and I start going to this church and I really saw the difference of like being a lukewarm Christian versus being like a Christian who is fully devoted to God. And so now what God has started to do is as like, I'm really like, okay, going to church. I'm really dedicating my life to God. I'm praying every day. I'm reading my Bible every day, scriptures, everything. Life still wasn't grand. <laughs> it really wasn't. Life still wasn't grand. Like I still was going through storms. I still was going through challenges. I'm still crying out to God to help me out with what I felt was during that time, one of my darkest times, the darkest season of my life. But it wasn't like God was not hearing me. He was. I am who I am. I am who I am. But what God had to do, he had to cleanse me. He had to cleanse all the toxicity that was in me. You know how you do a cleanse? And... You have to like, you know, you're doing a cleanse because you need to cleanse your body. You got to get all these things out of your body, like, you know, stuff, bad things that you've been eating, you know, from McDonald's to Popeye's or whatever it is. Shout out to them. I'm not knocking them, but, you know, you're just not eating healthy and you go for a cleanse. That cleanse is going to do some work on you, right? It really, really is. You're going to be in the bathrooms, be honest. Um, you know, you're going to just, you're going to see a transformation in, in, in your body, but without in order to go to that transformation, there's going to be, I wouldn't say challenges, but it's just like, it's going to be a season of where you just have to just kind of just get rid of everything. But once you are fully cleansed, you're made anew. And that's what God was doing. He was cleansing all the toxicity that was in me that I didn't realize. And what I mean by that, it was just, you know, bad habits that I was making or poor decisions that I was making, not trusting in him, the lack of faith, even though I felt like I was, going to church and trusting in him. It was just all these little things that I was doing that was affecting me. So though I gave myself up to Christ and was really like, okay, I'm not going to be in this lukewarm Christian anymore, but there's still some work that I need to do. And the moment I started doing that, things started to shift and things started to change. And the ultimate um, encounter that I had with God, and I mentioned this before, was a dream that I had. And with this dream, I felt God. I felt 
the love of God. I felt God lifting me up and taking me up. And I remember in that dream, I said, God, I surrender all to you. And my arms were stretched wide open. That was the ultimate encounter that I had with him through that dream. Like it was clear as day, like this was God. And from that point on, it really changed everything, everything. Even when I still went through some challenges, I knew that I was going to overcome every single challenge I was going to have. And God's blessing was upon me. His favor was upon me. And that's what it's about. It's an encounter with God. That's how you know who God is. God is love. I am who I am. Let's go ahead and dive into the word, right? So we could break down more on who God is. So first John chapter four, verse eight says, but anyone who does not love does not know God for God is love. Keyword, God is love. John three, John three, verse 16, the greatest scripture, the most powerful, most is, I don't want to say the most, actually you could say one of the most powerful scriptures, one of the most common scriptures, scriptures, one of the most popular scriptures. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John three, verse 16, love, love. God is love. And this is something I used to always say without realizing and really understanding really what that meant. God is love. Having an encounter with God is a love. He's going to show you who he is, right? Think about it. Those who are parents, those who are parents who are listening, right? Or those who have parents. We think about the sacrifices that our parents made for us, right? Like I remember when my daughter was born, she might've been maybe about four to five months at the time. And I remember like my, my, my daughter wasn't being breastfed at the time. And I remember she was on form and she, I think she's, well, no, she was God actually going to do or going on a formula for a while at that point. But anyways, <clears throat> I remember I had to get her um, baby water because, you know, you can't just give them just tap water or just like the sunny water or anything like that, at all, especially if you're using it to make formula. Right. You have to get the specific baby water that is there. Right. That you would give a baby. Right. Um, especially if you need to mix it with the formula that they need, formula they need they, that they need to drink. And so I remember at the time, like I just like my car, I didn't get my car fixed. I had a lot of stuff financially going on. So my money, I, I was broke. And I remember I went in my car and I scraped up some chains because I needed to get her some formula when I formed, I need to get this baby water so my baby could eat. Basically, she could be fed. And so I went in my car, scrapped her some change. And I went to Publix and got her this gallon of water, which was like 99 cents of baby water, and which lasted for whatever, how long, a couple of days or so, whatever it was. But that was able to feed my daughter at that time. That was a sacrifice, right? So I could have been like, I ain't got it or whatever. But I knew at that moment I had to figure out something. I had to make a sacrifice in some shape or form. I remember seeing my parents growing up, uh, especially my dad, who would take odd jobs sometimes. So not so he can buy himself a new pair of sneakers or uh, new clothing or whatever it is. But this was f for him to make sure that me, my brother, my sister and my mom had a roof over our head, food on the table, clothes on our back, lights are on all the essential things that is needed for us to survive. It was never about him. It was about us. Sacrifice. Right. So when we think about that, think what God does or think what he did with Jesus Christ. He sacrificed his only begotten son for us. This is who God is. He's all about sacrifice, unconditional love that he's going to give us. He's going to give us his mercy. He's going to give us his love. He's going to give us his grace. There is nothing that God, I want to say there's nothing God would not do, but God is there to help transform your life. But how do you know that? How do you get to that point? By building a relationship with him. You're, not, you're never going to get to know who anybody is without building a relationship with that person, right? If you are if you see somebody that you're interested in, right, or, or somebody you want to get to know, how do you get to know that person? 
you can hear somebody talk about like, hey, yo, Malik is a great dude. I like this guy. Yo, you need to get to know him. Oh, you know, Cassandra, she's dope. She's chill. She's super cool. She has a great heart. You hear it. And yeah, you can believe it. But there's a difference of hearing it versus actually getting having an encounter with that person, right? Experiencing it. There's a difference between hearing it and then versus experiencing it. Experiencing is 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 something that you can take along with you. You can build upon. You can grow from. Right? That's the same thing with God. It's it's an experience. It's knowing him by having a relationship with them, getting to know him by how do you do that? Prayer, reading the word, having conversations with God. Cause really what prayer is, you're just really just talking to God. You're just having a conversation to, with God, you know? And I think that's one of the most underrated things. And the reason I'm calling it underrated is because I don't think people realize how powerful it is just to have a conversation with God, how beautiful it is just to have a conversation with God, to spend time with God, because that's how you're going to have those encounters with him. That's how you're going to have like where God will come to you in, in, in your dreams, or you can hear the word of God, right? You'll understand or know the difference between your thoughts and his thoughts, right? You'll have a sense through the Holy Spirit, like through the sermon, knowing that, yo, this is God when you may want to do something, but you feel it in your senses, like, eh, I don't need to go there or need to do this. And that's the Holy Spirit guiding, guiding you. All of that is through a relationship, through an experience. If you don't have a relationship with somebody, how you get to know that person? How are you going to know the, the, the true goodness of that individual? You can hear it time and time and time again. But it's through an experience. An experience is being present. It's being present with that person. In this case, it's being present with God. And so how did Moses get to know God? Through the burning bush. When God called them over, I need you to free the children of Israel. I hear their cries. They're crying out to me. And so now I need you to go there and save them. I know you were there before, but I need you to go there and save them. Even when Moses was like, I don't know about this. You know, how are they going to know it's you or it's coming from you? All this other stuff. You know, I don't really speak well. Moses is overthinking. He's overthinking, but not really at that time, understanding the experience that he's receiving with the, by the presence of God and what God has instructed him to do. And God is like, I'm not going to send you out on a mission to fail. I'm going to send you out on a mission to succeed. See, when you have an encounter with God and he calls you to do something, there's success that's involved. There's victory that's involved. It's not going to be a failure. M Moses did not go to Egypt and then leave empty handed. I mean, yeah, he went there several times, but that was because God hardened the heart of Pharaoh which I believe that was, uh, it was intentional, but Moses kept going back and did different miracles happen. The children of Israel, God's children that was in bondage was free, was free from Pharaoh. And then they were able to see the goodness of God. Now, of course, we know when we get to, you know, you get into numbers, that's a whole nother chapter where they started kind of wilding out and not really, you know, going back against what God has saved them from. And it's a whole separate conversation. But I want us to focus on this part right here about the experience that you can receive and have with God, right? Um, let's go ahead and dive a little bit more into the word. So we're going to go into Exodus, actually, chapter three, verse 15, um, chapter 13, sorry, chapter Verse 3, chapter 13 to 15, or verse 13 to 15. Sorry, guys. Uh, but Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? God replies to Moses, and this is what he says, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me 
to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to be remembered for all generations. That's Exodus chapter 13, verse 13 through 15. I am who I am, Yahweh. I am the God of your ancestors. This is who God is. So we have three different verses or three different examples, two verses that I gave. God is love. God explained like I am who I am. I am the God of your ancestors. I am here for you. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Jacob. I am who I am. But Moses would have never known that if he didn't have an encounter and an experience with God. So if you haven't had an encounter with God or, or you felt like you haven't got an experience with God, go ahead and get it. Ask God to ask God to come to you. It's like, God, I don't know you. I want to, but I don't know you. I need an experience. I need an encounter with you. Reveal yourself to me. And he will. You know how many people I know who have told me like the moment that they've asked God for and requested an encounter from God or God to reveal yourself to me. And they did it in their life change forever. And that's what it's about. And I mean, forever for the good. And that's what it's about. Don't be afraid to ask God to reveal himself to you because he's waiting. Remember, God doesn't want to force his love and relationship to you. Right. God gives us the ability to free will. He gives us the choice to love whatever you want to love. But there's consequences if we love the wrong thing or we show favor over something over God. Because he is a jealous God, but he's a God of patience. And he wants, he will be patient with you. But you just have to come to him as you are and he's going to show you, I am who I am. I am the God of Jacob. I am the God of Abraham. Come to me. And he will reveal yourself to him because God is love. The ultimate definition of love is God. And that's how with me and how my whole life changed. And from then on, I saw the goodness of God. I saw the experience of goodness of God. And I would have conversations with God and he would reveal himself to me continually through dreams and you know um just how i hear his voice i just know so again nobody can come to me and tell me differently on who god is on how god is like i know what he has done for me through an experience by being present with god for asking for his presence in my life and so now whatever i went through 10 years ago 20 years ago all that stuff is actually, it becomes irrelevant and it's able to help me love people more and love people differently compared to how I loved them before. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect, but it, what it does mean is that I know because I have the favor of God and the love of God that I want to do everything I can to try to mimic that. And if I fall short, I can go to God and ask for mercy and forgiveness and he's going to give it to me. Why? Because he loves me unconditionally. So I hope this message serves. I hope this message blesses you. I hope this message helps you understand who God is. And I would say, you know, take it further than just this conversation. I definitely would encourage you to dive into the word and go to God and ask God, hey, God, I need you in my life. I trust in you. And I want to have an experience with you. I want to continue to know you if, if you feel like you know him, but you don't know him like the way you should. Go to him. Until the next episode, as always, one love.